Let's pray. Let's ask the Lord to guide us and direct us here for the next few minutes. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your presence that's here. Lord, on this first Sunday of 2018, Lord, we just submit ourselves to you this year to declare your word. And Father, we open our hearts and we open our ears to spiritual understanding. Father, I declare that this is going to be a year of growth, a year of increase, a year of advancement, a year of maturity. Lord, we thank you that we are moving up, moving higher, moving forward with you this year, and nothing shall hinder us. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you're in agreement with that, shout amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's turn in our Bibles to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, verse 29. And uh, we are going to move a little bit slowly here this morning and uh, let the Lord lead us because I believe we are going to establish some things that are going to hold true and hold out for the remainder of this year. Last year, I preached two sermon series on Sunday mornings for the entire year. It wasn't planned that way. That's just how God orchestrated it. And so this year, we might just get one series. I don't know. But uh, we are going to move into some things this year. You are going to move into a new arena this year. I declare it over you. You need to accept it. You need to receive it. And if you will be in agreement to walk in that word, I'm telling you right now, you are going to move to a brand new level like you have never been to before. How many are ready for that? Amen. Somebody said, well, that's kind of what preachers do on the first Sunday of the year. No, I came to tell you by the word of the Lord, this is going to be a year of advancement, the year of maturity for many, and you're going to grow. You're going to grow. You're going to grow. You're going to grow exceeding. You're going to grow in faith. You're going to grow in love. You're going to grow in knowledge. You're going to grow in the anointing. You are going to grow. Everybody shout, I'm going to grow. Praise the Lord. Look at somebody beside you and say, you might as well get ready. We're going to grow. Amen. Well, I want to read this one verse, and then we're going to look at several other passages, but Romans chapter 15, verse 29. The Apostle Paul talking to the Roman church, said this. He said, and I'm sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Look at it again. Paul says, when I come, when I get the opportunity to show up, this One thing I am sure of, I am going to come to you in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Everybody look up here and say fullness. Fullness. Now say it like this, say the fullness of the blessing. I've read the book of Romans through many, many times. I've taught the book of Romans. I have never Notice until just recently that the Apostle Paul said this. And what he denotes here is, when I come back to you, I'm not coming the same way I was the last time you saw me. I'm not coming just in the same anointing or in the same, with the same message. I am determined to come to you in the fullness of the blessing. Now, that would denote to me that there is a fullness. There is a fullness of the blessing that Paul realized he had not been in prior to this, but he believed that he was going to be able to come in the fullness of the blessing. And maybe we could say it like this. He believed that somewhere 
along this journey, he was going to come into the fullness of, of the blessing. Now, I don't believe the Apostle Paul was saying that he was to have arrived and there would be nothing else to gain. But there is this saying spoken of in Scripture of the fullness. Everybody say fullness. And what we're going to talk about this morning is going after that fullness, pursuing that fullness. I am in pursuit of This thing that is called the fullness of the blessing. And I believe we can have it. I said I believe we can have it. Amen. Amen. If the Apostle Paul could declare to the Romans, I am coming to you and I believe when I get there, I will be in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ, then it must be possible to be in the fullness of the blessing. And so I'm just declaring we at Grace Fellowship this year are going to enter a new level of fullness like we have never experienced before. And I'm convinced that if the Apostle Paul can get into this level of fullness, you and I can have the same determination so by the end of the year we can say it has been good to be in the fullness fullness of the blessing. Turn around and tell somebody, get ready for the fullness. Now, I've been studying on this, and I want to look at what the Apostle Paul said in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, beginning with verse 15. Now, you know this passage as the prayer, one of the prayers, that the Apostle Paul prayed over the Ephesus church. And before I read it, let me just say this. I have found that the Apostle Paul didn't just pray for the Ephesus church. But if you look at many of his letters to various groups or churches, he prayed for nearly all of them. And he prayed nearly the same thing said in one way or said in another. But let's look at this prayer in Ephesians chapter uh, chapter 1, beginning with, uh, well, beginning with verse 15. He said, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my Prayers, And then he tells us what he prayed, verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Let's pause right there and take note that the Apostle Paul said, Church members at Ephesus, my prayer for you, first of all, is that God would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Let me just say right here, there is no spiritual growth without revelation of him. The more you know of him and the greater revelation you have of him, the more you mature and the more you grow. So if Grace Fellowship Church is going to have a year of growth and a year of fullness and a year of maturity, we must receive this spirit of wisdom and this spirit of revelation in the knowledge of him. I've got to know him. How many could know him better? We want to know him. Then he said, verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now, first of all, let's make this understandable. You and I have an inheritance. If you're saved, say this right now. Say, I have an inheritance. One inheritance is good, isn't it? 
I mean, you hope if you've got any kind of inheritance, you hope it's going to be good. If you had a rich aunt or a rich uncle that has left you and you have an inheritance from that rich aunt or that rich uncle, you hope your name is to be found in the will. Amen. Amen. And you hope that at the reading of the will, you will find out what your inheritance was and you hope that he or she left you something out of their bank account. Or maybe they left you a house or a vacation home or a new car or something. That would be in the inheritance. You and I have an inheritance as the children of God. Everybody shout, I have an inheritance. inheritance. And we're going somewhere with this, so stay with us. He said, I'm praying that you're going to know the riches of the glory of this inheritance in the saints, verse 19, and what is the greatness, the exceeding greatness of his power to usward or his power toward us who believe. Now, how many believers do I have in the house? Shout, I'm a believer. believer. If you are a believer, there is exceeding great power that is made available to you. How many can see that? Shout, amen. amen. So the apostle Paul is saying, I'm praying that you're going to have greater understanding. I'm praying that you're going to have greater wisdom. I'm praying that you're not going to be one of these people that's going to say, well, I got saved and I got it all. I'm praying that you're not going to settle for what little bit of understanding you have. I am praying that you're going to be stirred up to go after the wisdom of God, to go after the anointing of God, to go after the knowledge of God, to have a greater understanding, a deeper appreciation for his love, and that you are going to get an understanding of the great inheritance that God has given to you through Christ Jesus. And not only that, I want you to know the greatness, the exceeding greatness of his power that is made available to every born-again believer who would dare to believe and confess the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Paul's saying. Now, would you agree that's good? I said, is it good? Verse 20 said, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him on his right hand in heavenly places above all principality, above all power, above all might, above all dominion, and every name that is named. Verse 22 says he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. The church, his body. Glory to God. The church, his body. Did you know that Jesus had a body when he lived here on earth? Did you know that when he went back to heaven, he obtained another body? You and I are that body, the church, the body of Christ. We are his body in the earth, his hands, his feet, his voice to do his work. That is great news. We are the church, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. (laughs) Turn around and tell somebody, say, we're going somewhere and we're going to get there. All right which is his body, the fullness of him. Everybody say the fullness. There's that. Fullness. Of him that filleth all in all. The Amplified Classic said, for in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete and who fills everything with himself. Isn't that good? Another uh, version said, completely filled and flooded with God himself. Who is his body? Who is his body? Who is his body? 
We are. Now, in, let's put it on an individual basis. Say, I am. I am. Are you part of the body? Yes. Are you in the body? Yes. Are you the body? Then the word of God said, the apostle Paul said, well, I'm praying for you to understand him better and to understand the greatness of his power and to understand the riches available to you in your inheritance. While I'm praying that, I am also praying that you understand as his body, you are filled with the fullness of him. Everybody shout fullness. Fullness. Shout, he's in me. Shout, he's in us. See, the church for too long has dwelt upon this earth living like we're something beneath. But we're filled with God. Dear Lord, have mercy. I said we're filled with God. The creator of the universe. The one who spoke all things into existence. The one who created the first man from the dust of the earth and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils and Genesis says he became a living soul. That is the one who is living on the inside of the church. Glory to God. And he is filling us with the fullness of himself. And everything that is in him, he is putting in his body. That's why the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, because as he is love, so are we to be love as his body on the earth. We are to lay hands on the sick. They shall recover because we are his body. We have peace that passes understanding. We have joy unspeakable and full of glory. We have his presence in us, filling us all in all, filling this body completely with himself so we are completely filled and flooded with God himself. Isn't that good? Fullness. Everybody shout fullness. In John 10, 10, Jesus said there is a thief. And the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. How many would agree stealing, killing, and destroying is on the dark side or the bad side of things? But notice, he said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Everybody shout more abundant. That term there, more abundant, is the same or could be used in the same capacity as fullness. Paul saying, I'm coming in the fullness of the blessing." I'm praying for you to receive understanding, wisdom in a state of fullness. And if you go on over in Ephesians, there's another prayer. And in that prayer, he actually speaks of us coming into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a complete or perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So when Jesus said, I'm coming, that you might have life and have it more abundantly, he is saying, I'm coming to give you something different than what the thief's trying to do. Because the thief, working through darkness and spiritual death, is working overtime to steal from you, to kill you, and eventually destroy you. But Jesus said, I'm come, and I'm working in a different way. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Or he could have said it like this. I have come that you might have life at its fullest measure. Everybody shout fullness. Shout we're going for the fullness. Now that word 
fullness means completeness. Full measure. To come into something or to arrive at something, finished, complete, full grown, mature, perfect, no more children, but spiritual adults. This is what we're aiming for. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I said, this is what we're aiming for. This is what we're aiming for. We are aiming for something. If you aim at nothing, what are you going to get? Nothing. But if you aim at something, at least you're aiming. Amen? And prayerfully, you're going to hit the target. This is what we are aiming for when we talk about the fullness or the completion. We're talking about moving into a level of maturity. How many believes God wants his body to grow up? And God wants his body to come into a place of maturity or fullness in unity where we can accomplish the things that he wants his body to accomplish in this earth. It is the abundant life. It is the fullness of life. It is the blessed life. It means to be fresh, to be strong, to be vibrant, to be, be active, and to be powerful. That's what we're aiming for at Grace Fellowship Church in 2018. We want to be active in the kingdom powerful in the kingdom. We want to be vibrant. We want to be on fire. We want to be full of the things of God. Amen. Shout amen. amen. So Paul prays this over and over. In Philippians 1, he prayed that the church would be filled with the fruits or the fruit of righteousness. In Colossians chapter 1, he prayed that the Colossians church would be filled with knowledge. In 2 Thessalonians, he prayed that they would fulfill their calling. And the list would go on and on. And what the Apostle Paul is saying is, there is more, and I want you to have it. There is more, and I don't want you to be satisfied without it. There is more, and you can have it if you'll dare pursue it. And I'm here to announce to you today that you can have more. There is more of his grace available, more of his power available, more knowledge available. You can know more than you know right now. You can manifest his presence more than you are right now. And if you will dare go after it, you can receive him in a greater measure, or as we're saying, in this level of fullness. More is connected with you having knowledge and understanding. The more you know about him, the more you are a candidate to receive things of him. So what we're going to deal with in the weeks ahead, we need to know some things that the church hasn't dealt with. We need to know who we are. We need to know what we are. Because a large number of the church don't have a clue of what they are. If you ask a great number, I did a message on this this last year. If you ask a great number of the church, what are you? Well, I'm saved. Yeah, but do you know what that word saved means? Because it's a whole lot more than just saving your soul from hell. It has to do with blessing. It has to do with prosperity. It has to do with your health and your well-being. Don't take my word for it. Look it up for yourself. And then some will go on and add this. I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. You were, but if you were saved, you are not any longer a sinner saved by grace. I moved, we found out in this church that the church was never referred to as sinners. The church was referred to 
as saints. I am not an old sinner just barely making it by saved by grace. I am saved by grace, but when I got saved by grace, I became a child of a new father. Lord have mercy. A child of the most high God. I have a heavenly Father, the Apostle Paul said, we can now cry, Abba, Father. He is my daddy. He is my father. I have his DNA. I'm not of the kingdom of darkness anymore. I've been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Glory to God, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. But we need to know who we are. You are somebody. I don't want to get in and preach all that today, but this is what will mature you. This is how you grow. Because a great number of the church is sitting around, and please don't misunderstand this, but they've been in the church, some of them 30, 40, 50 years, and they can't quote one more verse now than they could the day they got saved. And they don't know who they are. I'm the one the devil beats up on all week long. I'm the one that whatever the devil wants to do, every demon in hell has been beating up on me this week. Oh, really? Every demon. (laughs) Every one of them. Well, I'm just barely trudging through. You know, that's how we are as Christians. We're to barely trudge through. And barely make it. And oh, one of these days, then all will be well. But we are the poorest of poor on the face of the earth, the weakest of the weak, unable, unfit, unworthy. This is what a great number of Christians believe, and what a great number of preachers are preaching. But you can't mature with that. You can't grow with that. You're not going into the fullness with that. You are going to have to know who you are. You need to know what you are. You need to know what you can do in his name. And I've got news for you. If the Apostle Paul was praying for us to have a revelation of the great exceeding power that is available to us, we are supposed to be doing something with that power. Can I get a better amen? Amen. Well, we're power. We don't have any power. We just weep. Oh, as long as we can just keep coming together in one of these days, maybe, hopefully, by the skin of our teeth, we're going to make it. That is not who you are. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Think about that. If we don't say anything else, you are a child of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah the most rich, wealthy, most powerful, healthy being in the universe. I am his child. That's who I am. And if you are a believer, that's who you are. Oh, it changes things. Changes everything. I can tell we're just doing an introduction today. Everybody say who I am. What I am. What I have. What I can do. If you sit in this congregation this year, you're going to know who you are. You're going to know what you have. You're going to know what you can do. And you're not going to be afraid not to, to, to do it. Amen. When the devil shows up, you say, hello, devil. I'm glad you showed up. I needed to practice casting you out today. And boom, in the name of Jesus, he's gone. Hallelujah. 
Sickness and disease shows up at your house and you whip that sickness all over the house because you know with his stripes ye were healed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But you don't get there to this place of fullness or maturity or advancement or growth without an understanding from this word right here. This book right here. We believe the Bible in this church. From Genesis to Revelation, as the other guy said, all the way to the maps. We believe this is the word of God. Unchangeable. It is not in error. Dear Lord, you better amen that. I said it is not in error. It is written just as God wanted it to be written. It is his word on every subject that you and I will ever need information on. This is the Word of God. Not only is it the Word of God, this is our covenant. What God said He would do for us is in this book, and we can take it to the bank. We can believe it 100%. If He said it, you can count on it. And with that being said, this is a year of growth, the year of maturity. You have to come to this realization as Matthew 4 and 4 put it with the words of Jesus, man doth not live by bread alone. There it is. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You are a spirit being. Some of you are trying to figure out, is that right? <laughs> you are a spirit being. Spirit, soul, body. This body is what I'm living in now, but this isn't me. And the day my spirit leaves this body, this body will collapse. You can do whatever you want with it. Because it's not me. Somebody said, I don't want them to put me in a six-foot hole. I don't care. Well, I want to be buried above ground. Well, you're not buried above ground, but placed above ground. You won't, it won't matter to you. If they bury you at sea and the fish get you, it's not going to matter. I am not my body. I am a spirit being created in the image and the likeness of God. He is a spirit. You and I are a spirit. And when we are born again, our spirit is made alive unto God. We do not live by bread alone. I'm convinced that Adam and Eve lived really the life source for them was the word of God as he came in the cool of the day, walking in the garden. The Bible says they heard the voice of the Lord. That voice is what got their attention. Up until the fall, they lived by the voice of God. The voice that had created them was the voice that kept them living. And as long as God's voice sustained them, They were alive and well. But the time came when they listened to another voice. Now they are in darkness and no longer in the kingdom of light. But Jesus came. 
And he said, you're not going to live by bread alone. Stop living as though this world is all there is. Live for the word of God. For in the word of God is life. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. Now, the reason I bring all that out is this. You are not going to mature without the bread of life. Thank you, Pastor Patty. Impossible. Amen. Impossible. Yeah, but you don't understand, preacher. I can shout with the best of them. I don't care if you can shout all the way around the parking lot and run every pew in Laurel County. Doesn't mean you're mature. Dear God. Doesn't mean you're mature. Lord, are you going to have me? I don't care if you're in a legalistic group and your hair has grown to your ankles and you've had to fold it up and tuck it in. (laughs) That does not make you mature. I'm going to get letters over this. I'm going to say, Nancy Baldwin will answer these letters. (laughs) You are what you eat. I said you are what you eat. And the Lord spoke to me this week and he said, I got too many of my children that are still eating out of the table of darkness and spending no time at the table of light and they wonder why they're weak and they don't know who they are, they don't know what they are, they don't know what they have and they certainly don't know what they can do. And the Lord said it's because you have not spent enough time at the table. Everybody shout the year of growth. Shout the year of maturity. But you're not going to mature without spending time in this. Somebody say, oh, that's all our pastor ever tells us. Spend time in the Word. 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 I can't go into all this. But the Lord said there are three things. I wrote this down months ago. And he said, this is, this is the key. This is the key. It's been my key this last year. It is your key to whatever you need for him to do. And these that I'm going, these three things are the key to moving up, advancing, and moving into maturity. Are you ready? Say, give it to us, Pastor. Go give it to you real fast. Keep the word in your ears. Keep the word in your eyes. And keep the word in your mouth. Profound revelation. Dear Lord, what a revelation. It is a revelation. Keep the word in your ears. Keep the word in your eyes. And keep the word in your mouth. I, you jot some of these passages down, but of course we know that Proverbs chapter 4 makes it very, very clear to us, beginning with verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of your Heart. Well, if you keep them in your ears and in your eyes, you will get them in your heart. Amen. For their life. Everybody shout their life. They are life to all that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart for all with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now, in your ears, your eyes, and your mouth. I'm going to throw these to you real quick. In Deuteronomy 17, verse 18 and 20, when God gave instruction to the king, when they would choose a king, 
It says, and it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, he shall write him a copy of this law in a book. Out of that which is before the priests and Levites. Go to the next verse. And it shall be with him. And he shall read therein all the days of his life. That would be every day. That he may learn to fear the Lord his God to keep all all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. And if you go on down, it, the blessing of it is down there at the end, he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. His reign will be prolonged and his children's reign will be prolonged. How many want your days to be prolonged and your children's days to be prolonged. Amen. Well, I said, first thing the king's got to do is write this law, write the word, write the word. Well, if you're writing it, you got it in your eyes. If you're writing it, you got it in your spiritual ears. And then you got to read it. Everybody shout, read it. Amen. See, some folks, the only reading they do is when the pastor says, turn to such and such. And we've even got to the point nowadays, we rely so much on the screen, we don't even know where our Bible is. Find it. Amen. I said go find it. Amen. Because you need to write in it. You need to highlight in it. You need to meditate in it. You'll be amazed what God will do this year if you get you a Bible and start highlighting it and writing notes in it and setting it up to where he can take you back to those passages when you need them, and how many believes he will do that. Amen. And you can flip over there and turn the pages and put your eyes on the word, put your ears on the word, get the word out of your mouth, for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. You will be amazed at what can happen. Now, I, I'm not going to turn to these, but, but over and over, Deuteronomy 11, the Bible talks about putting the word in your heart and speaking the word. Deuteronomy 6 talks about talking the word. Joshua 1.8 speaks of, of uh, speaking that word, keeping that word in your mouth. These are the keys to you maturing. These are the keys to you growing. Can you shout amen? Amen. And so I'm going to leave you with a challenge. Because I could preach all day, but we won't do that. Nobody said go ahead. <laughs> this is the challenge. I'll come back to this maybe next week. But from the book of Romans all the way up to Jude, you will have the letters that are written to the churches and individuals. From Romans up to the book of Revelation, excluding the book of Revelation. Now, we're not saying exclude Revelation or exclude Acts or exclude Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but... From Romans to Jude, those letters deal with the new covenant and what we are, who we are, what we have, and what we can do. And this is my challenge to Grace Fellowship Church. I want you to get in Romans forward, and I want you to look at all the passages where it says, in him, in whom we have, and begin to find out who you are, what you are, what he has done, so you can have him in your life, and you can be all that he will have you to be. It's called fullness. Can you shout amen? Amen. Somebody said, well, what about the Gospels? Read those too. But we are going to 
we are going to take these other books apart to the point where we know what is said in Ephesians about us, what's known, what is said in Romans about us, what is said in Philippians about us. We are going to know what the book of Hebrews says about us because these letters specifically deal with the church, who we are, what we are, what we can do. Are you ready for it? Shout, I'm ready. Shout, I'm going in. This is my year. I'm maturing. I'm growing. I'm growing up in him. Come on, stand to your feet and give the Lord praise. Oh, come on, clap, rejoice. I have uh, really given you a foundation and an introduction to where the Lord is taking us this year. And so don't miss, be here, because we're going to start digging into things to see what he says about us. Now, <laughs> yeah. When he wrote to the Ephesians, don't read it just to the Ephesians. It's written to you. Say, it's written to me. Start reading these books as they are written to you. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scare some of you right here, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. You need to read them over and 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 again and again and again. Again and again. This is what will happen. Revelation will start coming each time you read. But more so, I would say about the fourth, fifth time through those books even more. I've read, I can't tell you how many times I've read those books through this year and uh, the Lord said, go back and do it again. Okay? And I have wrote and highlighted to the point where in many of these places I don't have anywhere left to write. The Lord said, that's all right. You can get another Bible and start writing again. He is going to honor you with revelation if you'll honor him with time. Did you hear what I said? He's going to honor you with revelation if you will honor him with time. Amen. Bow your heads, please. Father, it is our desire to grow. It is our desire to increase. Father, we pray just as Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus and other churches, Lord, that you would increase us in knowledge and understanding and enlightenment, that we can come into the fullness of what you have intended for us. Lord, we receive it by our faith. We declare this year we will give you the time that you desire from us. And Lord, as we give time in these books, these epistles, Lord, give us greater revelation of who we are, what we are, what we can do, what you've done for us. Jesus' name. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I wonder if there's anybody here today who would say, Pastor, I'm not a Christian. I need to be saved. Please pray for me. If that's you, would you slip your hand up right where you are? We're not going to embarrass you or anything like that, but we do want to give you an opportunity to receive Christ. Anybody today? 